Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2 to chapter 2 verse 4 or possibly just chapter 1 verse 2 to the end of the chapter you make up your own mind when I get to the end of the podcast why these limits for my passage well I'm not beginning with chapter 1 verse 1 because it's a superscription and it reads as if it's the superscription for the whole book the vision of Isaiah son of Amos which he saw and all that clearly refers to more than just chapter 1 I think in chapter 1 verse 2 to verse 20 we have a section where the dominant imagery is the law court and it begins with an appeal to witnesses hear O heavens listen O earth calling the witnesses into the court to bear witness to what happens and then an accusation the Lord says I brought up children but they've rebelled against me so a law court imagery strongly present at the beginning but running through in verse 18 for example let's argue it out that argue is a legal word in Hebrew it doesn't show in English but it is in Hebrew and sins too are a breach of laws or at least have an echo of breach of law about them and then in verses 21 to 26 we have a chiasm which maybe verses 27 to 31 expand the end of the chiasm you make up your own mind as I said a chiasm is one of those structures where the beginning and the end echo, echo each other and then the bits between echo each other so that you get a strong sense of reversal round a central point point. and so at the beginning the faithful city has become a whore she that was full of justice righteousness lodged in her but now murderers at the end afterward you shall be called the city of righteousness the faithful city inside that dross and wine mixed with water and in verse 25 smelting away the dross and removing the alloy the other strong echo between princes and judges and counsellors verses 23 and 26 the beginning of it don't actually come quite in the place they ought to to make a pure chiasm but they do strongly help to build up this sense of reversal between the first half and the second half pivoting around that central verse 24 therefore thus says the sovereign the Lord of hosts the mighty one of Israel ah I'll pour out my wrath on my enemies and avenge myself on my foes and we know from reading the chapter that the enemies and foes are in fact the people of God but by reading this section we discover that that wrath and vengeance actually has a, a purpose of producing change and renewing the people of God restore your judges as at the first and your counsellors as at the beginning in chapter 2 verses 2 to 4 we have that salvation oracle that also occurs in Micah in days to come it begins as many salvation oracles do the mount of the Lord's house shall be established nations shall stream to it and then with an eschatological hope at the end where we beat our swords to plowshares and war is no longer studied anywhere great day to come then in chapter 2 verse 5 we have something new beginning there's a change of tone and of contents it has a dramatic beginning with a direct address from the prophet to the people oh house of Jacob come let's walk in the light of the Lord and in this section which runs from verse 5 on through into chapter 5 even the accusations become more specific and the historical setting as a result is rather less vague than it was in chapter 1 and isn't really eschatological like it is in the first few verses of chapter 2 so the whole section chapter 1 of the book of Isaiah moves from corruption in verses 2 to 20 of chapter 1 with their accusation in a law court through the decision to punish as a way to purify in verses 21 to 31 or possibly 21 to 26 and then in the beginning of chapter 2 the eschatological restoration and this is very like the three main movements in the book chapters 1 to 39 chapters 40 to 55 and chapters 56 to 66 you'll notice though that I've left out chapter 2 verse 1 it's another superscription and as such it separates you may also have noticed that I 
pretty much left out verses 27 to 31 of chapter 1. Now they might serve a very similar purpose to verses 2 to 4 of chapter 2. The reason I'm not sure that they do it is because they're more historical and less eschatological than chapter 2 verses 2 to 4 and as a result they don't fit the third section of the book of Isaiah as well. But that's something you'll have to make up your mind about. Do we go with the form or do we go with the possible function of the chapter as an introduction to the book? Bye for now.